Hey folks, welcome to part 25 of the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam Series. Um, the first question here is going to be, why would you use a TWBX file over a TWB file? Would it be to reduce the file size, to include data extracts and resources within the file, or to remove excess data from the file, or finally to enable real-time data updates? So for this, we're going to reference the Tableau documentation. Uh, here it talks about the different file types and folders, but you'll see that the TWB file um, which has a .twb file extension, it basically holds the worksheets plus zero or more dashboards and stories. So when you go into Tableau, essentially think of it as it's just kind of housing all of these different um, structural components. So it's going to have the visualizations, you know, your worksheets, your dashboards, your stories, but it's not really going to have the data to populate it as a file, if that makes sense. So in contrast, if you look at the package workbooks, the TWBX, this is a package workbooks uh, workbook with a TWBX uh, file extension, and it is a package workbook. So by the way, a TWB file is basically an XML file, but the .TWBX, it's gonna be more of a zip file. It's gonna have a bunch of different components, right? So specifically, again, it's gonna be a single zip file that contains a workbook, right? It's gonna contain the workbook. So it's gonna have your worksheets, zero or more dashboards and stories, but it's also going to have any supporting local file data and background images. Um, and then again, this format is the best way to package your work for sharing with others who don't have access to the original data. So long story short, um, this, you know, once you have a visualization here, your visualization, your, t your dashboard, your story, that's going to be the workbook, but the TWBX here, right? Why would you use a TWBX? Because it's going to have a lot more information. It's going to have the actual data, any kind of images, um, you know, all that fun stuff. So why would you use that over a TWB file? Would it be to reduce the file size? Obviously not, right? Because this is an XML file. This is going to be this file plus a bunch of additional information, such as the actual data, a lot of the other metadata, things of that nature. So it's not going to reduce the file size. Would it be to include data extracts and resources within the file? Yes, absolutely. Again, this is the TWB file in addition to those additional resources and the data itself. So it's definitely going to be, you know, we're leaning towards the second option here. Third option, would it be to remove excess data from the file? No, you're not removing data. If anything, you're actually adding data to what's in this file. So that can't be the correct solution. Last option says to enable real-time data updates. Um, here, we're really getting into more of like a connection type thing. Like, do you have an extract or a live connection? And, you know, as you've seen in other videos, if you wanted a real-time data to be you know updated in that case you would use a live connection but that's not what it's asking here in terms of why you would use a twbx file over a twb it would be to include the data extracts and those additional components as we just uh, kind of reviewed in the documentation here so that's going to be the solution by the way if you do enjoy videos like this consider liking the video and subscribing for more content just like this next question um kind of appears to be a simple one but if i'm honest i myself stumbled upon this initially so let's say you want to display a vertical bar chart right it could be different dimensions it could just be a single bar but you want a vertical bar you should drag a measure to the row shelf the column shelf the bar shelf or the marks card which of these is going to allow you to have a vertical bar so to answer this let's go into tableau i have a blank slate over here let's say i wanted to look at profit right as a vertical bar if i you know the first option says rows if i drag this to rows that gives me a vertical bar, right? It's, it's standing upright. So that is a vertical bar. Even if I was to break this down by, you know, a particular dimension such as product, you'll notice, uh, let me do that again. If I drag the product here, you'll notice it is a vertical bar chart broken out by these different um, categories. So you do have to drag it to the row shelf. What if I drag it to the column shelf? Now you have a horizontal bar. So it's important to really understand and kind of just know off the top of your head what the visualization is going to look like if you drag certain components to the column shelf as opposed to the row shelf. So obviously with a vertical bar, you want the rows. For a horizontal bar, you're going to want the columns. What about the bar shelf, right? That's really just a distractor. There is no such thing as a bar shelf, right? You have the pages card or shelf over here. You have the filters pane. Um, or really the filters card, the marks card, which is the last option here, by the way, but there's no there's no bars shelf. So how about the marks card? If I was to maybe, you know, drag profit onto like text within the marks card, all you're getting is just a mark of your, you know, aggregate profit, right? And I could drag this to other components within the marks card. 
not really going to help or get us to uh, to what we're looking for. So that's not the solution here. The only solution here is going to be the rose shelf. Next question. What is a calculated field? Is it the number of marks in a visualization? Is it a field created by applying custom formulas to existing data? Is it a quick table calculation or is it a field used to display metadata about the data set. So first option, number of marks in a visualization. So if I have, we can go back to something like this where we had um, basically a bar chart of, you know, broken up by categories. And on the bottom left, if you notice, it'll tell you three marks. So what that's telling you is within, the, within this visualization, you have three marks and then you, it goes into specifics in terms of one row by three columns. But is this number, the three marks, is that a calculated field? The answer is no, that's not that's not an example of what a calculated field is. So that can't be the correct solution. Second option, is it a field created by applying custom formulas to existing data? In other words, are you using that data to create additional data in, in Tableau's own own words? Um, so for example, if I, you know, I have sales over here and let, let's let's create a new sheet. So I have sales over here, and then um, maybe you want to look at this um, over a year, you know, year on year basis, um, I can drag that to rows and then I have year over year. And these are my sales. But let's say I also have, you know, my profit over here. So I have my sales, I have my profit. And I want to get, you know, an understanding of my year over year expenses, which is not really broken out here, right? There's no column. You have your revenue here, which is sales. You have your profit, which is, you know, the byproduct of revenue minus expenses, but I don't have my expenses. So maybe I want to introduce a new field that's not already here, right? So I can create, I can click on this button over here, right? The drop down over here and go to create calculated field. I can also use an existing um, field over here, let's just sales, such as sales, right click, create calculated field. And then it popped up on my monitor over here. Let me drag that here. I can name this whatever I want, right? So we can we can create a field called expenses. And how do we compute expenses? Well, it's going to be, you know, I know what my profit is. I know what my sales are. So if I take my sales and subtract profit, that should get me my expenses, right? So I hit apply. And notice you see this kind of equal sign next to the hash symbol, right? So all of these measures have a hash, hash symbol. And over here, particularly, you have an equals preceding it, right? That indicates it's a calculated field. Now that I have my expenses, I can drag that here. And now you can see my year over year expenses. So my sales was 494,000. And then let's just resequence this. My expenses were 442,000. And as a result, now my profit is this much. So what did we do here? We basically, you know, we created a field by applying a custom formula to the existing data. So that's what a calculated field is. Is it a quick table calculation? Well, what is a quick table calculation? So I have my sales over here, for example, and, you know, we're looking at it year over year. What if instead of the actual sales, I maybe wanted to see, you know, the percent delta between the prior year and the current year, right? I can right click on this measure. I can go to quick table calculation. Uh, which is basically, you know, a calculation that occurs on the table that you're viewing, right? And that's that's how it's broken out or, or segregated. So basically, I can say, hey, I want the percent difference. And now it's going to be taking the percent difference from the prior year. So if I was to bring sales here again, you can kind of see side by side. So this 472,000 is a 4%, you know, 4.2%, 4.26% reduction um, as compared to 2019. So using this table, we're able to perform quick table calculations, which quickly give us the uh, ability to see, you know, from any of these different calculations, whether it's percentile, rank, percent of total, you have you. And then you do have the option if you, you know, based on how your table is structured, you don't necessarily have to go straight down. You can segregate it, uh, you know, at the order date level or the cell level, you can go across. And if you have certain groupings, you can bring that into the, into the equation as well. But is that a calculated field? No, by definition, it is not. It is what's considered a quick table calculation. So that's not the correct solution. Last option, is it a field to display metadata about the data set? No, that's just, that's really just a distractor. Um, as you've witnessed, the only correct solution here is the second option here. That is what a calculated field is. Quick pause. If you like these videos, but you're serious about acing the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Examiner Certification, I've got news for you. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in practicing with an even more realistic set of practice exam questions. There are at least five different practice exams, 45 questions each, with the proper distribution of exam topic areas. You'll know exactly which questions you got right or wrong and what the correct solution 
solutions were. Now, there are a limited number of spots available, so be sure to take advantage of the limited time offer because as you know, practice makes perfect. And that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. Be sure to share it with someone who you think might find it helpful. And of course, as always, I will catch you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Yeah.